Located in Parnet, Julian Lemon with Moody Web. Sorry about my camera stand at Bush League, we don't have uh, a crew to do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, so can you kind of let us know what's going on in Hellboy 2? What's your character? What are you doing? What's the, what's the bad What's the bad part of you? I'm like Richard Water, the, uh, the nemesis of the movie. I get big red over there, I get a headache. So, uh, Every I can. Um, Chris Nevada is a great character. Guillermo wrote him, obviously, and uh, the last time I wrote Guillermo was back to the book. Oh, okay. He writes great bad guys, too. It's not, it's the writing pool still. It's not like, oh, I want to take over the world or I want to cast. It's not about like father son issues. It's deep stuff, so that makes it. When you play a bad guy, you don't have to walk around playing all the bad guys. You walk around with your premise and your vibe. And with the situation that he puts you within, those beautiful films he makes, you, uh, you know, you're given the best help you can to pull it off. And I think this one, I would say, I think we really kicked off, so it's a great picture. Awesome. Now, you know, you've known Guillermo for a while now. You've done some films together, and he's got some great success. He's coming off some major critical success with Pan's Labyrinth. What's it like to see him in full bloom as the quote-unquote A-list Hollywood director? And is, it, is he easy to work with? Is he grown an ego? I mean, what's, what's he like now? Yeah, well, I mean, he, I mean yeah, he knows, he knows he's, uh, he's doing well. I mean, as he should. But I'll be honest with you, to be an actor that is having a role written for him, by a man who's at that stage of his evolutionary stage of his career, and he's finally being celebrated by not just by us lot, but by this kind of side of the picture genre. But on the other side, too, the more puristic kind of fan, well, he's recognized. So to be a part of his career this time in his life, it's just a blessing. It's really, really a blessing, and I'm mean, happy to be it, really. What do you do to add reality when you're playing basically a mythological character? How do you how do you kind of prepare for that? I think I think it's a good question. Like I think you don't you don't do that as much in mythology. Obviously the story and the research, mm -hmm. you know, elves, wolves, trolls, things they can do shape shifting and stuff. You have to be aware of it. Sometimes you might have something that you can overlook and you're like, well, I wouldn't do this predicament because I can do this. But I think with bad guys or uh, mystical characters or whatever, you have to deeply root yourself in the truth of character and truth of your situation. And I think it's true by the heart or like father son issues or whatever within a lot of these kind of characters. They're very human elements, they're very human qualities. And the great thing about that is vulnerable qualities. And if you I think in any good character, if there's no vulnerability, I think it's a great danger of not pulling off the right character. So I think you have to root in the human element, not the myth. One other quick question. Uh, you uh, played a um, a complex villain with father issues in Blade yeah, Two, yeah. and you're playing a complex villain with father issues in Hellboy Two. Uh, are you going to continue to work with Guillermo and uh, try to play complex characters with father issues? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, actually, my contract now it says like I, I don't read the script until I know it has complex characters with father issues. Excellent. And that's, that's the fact. I mean, Thanks, look, very quickly, your career change, obviously, from your previous incarnation. So how do you feel? I mean, you must be pretty happy. You know, with the I mean, I, I really enjoyed you in you know, Blade 2, but obviously, you know, it's, it's incredible. It must be, it must be quite a feeling, you know, that you've made the, the transition from... I think so. Absolutely. I mean, I'm the first person to admit myself and, and understand how lucky I am, but I, I, I did a lot of theatre for a lot of years, 20 movies. Uh, you know, I don't show up to a lot of stuff. I'm busy trying to make movies. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, it's more, not more, but any more special time and effort. And it's, it's, you know, I used to get some real, this is an ultimate real work on, like, the end of the tour. Yeah. You know, yeah, of course. I mean, we were, I, don't, I don't think anyone in life has moments of ups and downs. When you reach those lower points, you can only hope for, you know, a life of and, and to have something like this working hard, I, you know, I feel cool. very, very lucky, man. Very lucky. Yeah. Really. You like the movie, right? You like what you've seen so It looks pretty amazing, yeah. I'm uh, really impressed with the trailer. Yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to it. I'm in it. I'm, I like that. No, and, and your look and everything from what we've seen for the trailers and the release footage, you have very good screen presence. Thanks, Thanks so much, brother. God bless you, D-Will. Hey, you too. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks, Thanks. Good to meet you, partner. Have a good one.